The other day on uh, reddit.com I made a post about a method for doing uh, long distance boosters and uh, in the video I made for that post I showed off a minecart station uh, this station right here and some people had some questions about that so I'm gonna try to explain a little bit more about it um, so first of all some of the, the basic features we have in this station are uh, a Pez dispenser that holds carts when we're not using it and so we can call up a new cart just by pressing this stone button so there's a new cart and the cart will sit here and wait for us to uh, hop in it uh, as soon as we jump in it'll activate this stone button right here and send out a booster now I'm actually not going to uh, wait around there goes the booster because if I stay in the cart I'll end up at my destination halfway across the world so uh, rather than doing that I'm just going to destroy the cart and carry it over here. Now this is the uh, the arrival zone in the station and uh, it's it's nice because you can basically when you arrive it'll sort of split the difference between these two buttons and you can sit here uh, for pretty much as long as you want. You don't have to uh, immediately jump out of the cart but as soon as it detects a cart without a rider on it it will send up a booster and carry that cart back to the Pez dispenser. Now I've really enjoyed building this station and I would love to kind of show off some of the uh, the mechanics of it. Unfortunately, if we come down here you can see that might be kind of difficult. Uh, it's, it's pretty crowded in here so I'm not sure how successful I'll be at showing off how the inside works. So uh, to kind of uh, explain exactly everything that's going on here I'm going to load up a test world, which is right here, and I'm going to rebuild a station and let you watch. So uh, this will probably be a fairly long video. I'll split it up into several parts, uh, so it's not all one 30-minute video, uh, maybe three 10-minute sections. But we can go and, and sort of build the uh, various constituent components of the station, and uh, hopefully it'll help some people out. So the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is uh, to build the Pez Dispenser cart storage system. Uh, in kind of preparation for that, I did a couple things. Uh, first of all, I built this little half block platform. Uh, I used half blocks so we'd have this nice little step down into the cart. Uh, but you can build it with uh, full blocks if, if you'd prefer. Uh, next, I laid some track uh, just so you didn't have to watch me do it. Um, and we'll use that later. And the final thing I did was dig out this trench underground where we can lay some redstone wire uh, and have it out of the way of our, our tracks. Uh, but to build the Pez dispenser, the first thing we'll do is basically just build a ramp just like this. Um, it can be kind of however big you want it to be. Uh, the bigger it is, the, the more carts it'll be able to hold, but your end result should look something just like this. Uh, once we get the ramp built, we'll come up to the top here and put a little two block extension on the end and then place a, another block right on the tip like that. Then when we destroy the extension, Ooh. we'll be left with a floating block in the air. Uh, the reason we do this is so when the minecart comes up the ramp, it'll hit this block and fall directly down and stack nicely. Otherwise, it would still have some momentum and sort of curve out uh, and land somewhere out here where we don't want it. Uh, but once we get the ramp and the uh, floating block built, we can come down here and dig a little trench. And the reason I do this is, one, it gives us one additional space for an extra minecart. And two, I think it's a little easier to get some of the mechanics working properly. But uh, once we'll, we'll dig a three block wide trench right here. Some people will build it with just two, but uh, I'll show you why I do three in just a second. Now that we've got the trench dug, I'll put a half block at the base of the ramp, and this basically will lift the bottom minecart up uh, a half block. That prevents the booster from grabbing two carts as it as it goes by. So uh, then, now that we got that laid, we can start laying some mine tracks, minecart tracks. And some people will build their uh, 
system so it actually curves around and returns the booster to the holding area like that. I think it's easier just to build a little uh, uh, slope like this so the cart just comes up and then rolls back. And to kind of facilitate that and make sure our booster cart has enough momentum, we'll build a track adjacent to that right in this third uh, row I dug out. And this will be a two-way booster to make sure our uh, cart has plenty of momentum as it uh, goes by. So that's kind of what it looks like. And then we can join up the base of the Pez dispenser to the main track here. So just lay some carts just like that. So there we go. And then I'll kind of cap this off with an extra block. This will keep our booster cart from flying off the end here. So now that that's done, I can come back here and finish out the uh, holding area for our, our booster. And I'll do that just by digging kind of a standard 2x2 two two booster. So uh, we want the track to curve around like this, then when we place a block directly on top of this slope track section, we can then place a track on top of that, and that will cause it to kind of curve back around on itself in sort of a 9 shape, and we destroy that block, and that curve is maintained. So then finish it out here. And then again, just kind of cap it on the end there. All right, so that's our uh, holding area for our booster and the tracks we need for the Pez dispenser itself. The next thing I'll do is come and extend a track from the arrival zone all the way up our ramp over here. So This is the track that the uh, returned cart will ride in on to get back to the Pez dispenser and then just carry it right up to the top of the ramp. So there we go. So that's pretty much all our, our track uh, already laid. So the next thing we need to do is the redstone wiring. And we'll basically come and just stick a, a button down here uh, on the middle of the platform. This can be a stone or a wooden button, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but for our purposes I like to use a, a wooden button here so I can throw a cobblestone on it and that will cause the redstone to remain lit while I'm doing the wiring. So because I dug this trench earlier I know this block is directly under our wooden button but uh, for your purposes you may need to kind of count blocks or something to figure out exactly where that is but the redstone as long as it's directly underneath the wooden button uh, will we'll carry the current from it. And the reason I like to have the redstone lit when I'm doing wiring is because I know uh, if the redstone's lit, redstone can only travel for 15 blocks and when you reach the end of the 15 blocks it will turn off so I know where the, the limit of my redstone is so I know where I need to put an extender in. So I'll throw in an extender right here. And I won't talk too much about the specifics of redstone wiring. Uh, certainly all of this is, is very basic. Uh, so that's just your standard extender right there. Uh, you can certainly find plans for that pretty easily. All right, so I'll place a torch right here. And again, I know that this block is directly underneath our curve track section. So we're placing a redstone torch directly under this track piece right here. And I uh, had already figured that out earlier. So here we are. So I've been having a, a graphics glitch where the uh, section of track that's directly above uh, our uh, redstone torch is actually reversed. You can see it just swapped back there. Um, so it looks like it's, uh, sometimes it'll look like it's activated when it's actually not, but that's just a, a graphical glitch. 
But uh, now that we've got things kind of wired up, we can go ahead and load a cart into our holding area booster and get it started just like that. And let's test it out. We'll come over here and jump on this button. And you can see it goes out, gets boosted nicely, and then on its way back as well. So There we go. And once again, you can see that graphics glitch right there. But uh, just for now, what I'm going to do is add in a booster to this section. We'll eliminate this booster later on, but it'll help us load some carts in here for now uh, to kind of test things out. So basically the same ideas uh, before, we'll just build a standard 2x2 two two booster. And one thing, carts, when they enter uh, the Pez dispenser, they'll need to have a pretty good amount of momentum. Otherwise, they can get stuck uh, right here at this gap, and they'll just sit there right at the, the top and won't actually fall down. So it's a good idea if your carts are kind of losing momentum before they get to the, uh, the top of the Pez dispenser, go ahead and throw a booster in right before it. But like I say, we'll probably actually eliminate this booster later on. So I'm going to test it out now, throw some carts in there, so we'll see if it works. So there it goes, stacking nicely. There we go, you can see them stacking up on top of each other. Alright, three should be enough for now. And so if we want to test it, we can just step on the button. And you can see it brought out a cart. Now we haven't actually finished the stone button that will prevent the cart from, from going on like that. But if nothing else, uh, for now our Pez dispenser is working properly. So that is good news. Alright, so next we'll probably build the, uh, the mechanics for the um, departure zone right here with a stone button that will uh, hold the cart in place until you actually get in the cart.